Thank you all for coming. It's great to see such a great turnout. Um, so I'm an MD, PhD student, and my job is to use science to advance medicine. And I really love what I do. And that can actually create some awkward moments. Let me explain. Whenever I meet someone new and they ask what I do, I have a hard time containing my enthusiasm. And when you study pain, <laughs> it can create some awkward moments. So it, when I start talking about pain with a big grin on my face, <laughs> it throws people off. And the response I get is often awkward silence or confusion. And that's understandable because pain is no laughing matter. But there are really exciting things happening in pain neurobiology. And I'm happy to share my part. So my interest in pain began during my first year of medical school when my mom and stepfather were involved in an airplane crash. They were critically injured, but made a remarkable recovery and are here in the audience today. But their, their painful recovery revealed to me that safe and effective treatments for severe and chronic pain do not exist. What they needed for their pain was a magic bullet, a drug that affects its target without unwanted side effects. So for my PhD work, I joined Clifford Wolf's lab at Boston Children's Hospital looking for a magic bullet for pain. When you're in pain, nothing else matters. C.S. Lewis put it this way, pain insists upon being attended to. So perhaps it's no wonder that pain is the main reason that people go to the doctor worldwide. And pain is also a huge economic burden. The cost of pain to the US economy is over $600 billion every single year. That's more than the cost of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes combined. There's got to be a better way, a smarter way to treat pain. Current drugs that treat pain like Tylenol and morphine don't work that well for people with chronic or severe pain. In fact, doctors typically have to treat three patients with these drugs before finding one who reports even a 50% reduction in their pain. Never mind that opioid drugs like morphine cause devastating addiction. Now there is one drug that can stop pain signals before the brain ever perceives them local anesthetics. These drugs, like lidocaine, are the numbing agents used for dental procedures. In order for local anesthetics to block nerve signals, they must first enter the nerve fiber. The signals here are represented by pulses of light. But for the local anesthetics to enter the nerve fiber, they first must pass through the membrane to block the signal from inside the nerve. The problem is that they enter all the nerves at once causing numbness and paralysis in the area treated. And since local anesthetics pass out of the nerve as quickly as they get in, the signals soon return along with the pain. So my research has revealed a way to use a, a new type of local anesthetic to block nerves in an activity-dependent way. So this means that only active pain nerves are blocked without causing numbness or paralysis. For example, if this drug were used during surgery, the surgical pain would be blocked for 24 hours or more, but the protective role of pain in your body would not be harmed. The, the protective role would be preserved. And that's because if you had an injury elsewhere in your body, you would still feel pain there, even though the pain at your surgical site would be blocked for 24 hours or more. Here's how we did that. So starting with a, a local anesthetic like lidocaine, an electrical charge is added to create a permanently charged form of lidocaine. This electrical charge is key. 
Positively charged molecules cannot enter the nerve fiber membrane, so positively charged lidocaine would not have any effect because it cannot get inside the nerve to block the signal. It would not cause numbness, it would not cause paralysis, and really it would have no sensory effect at all. But if this cannot get in the nerve on its own, then how could it possibly any, be any good for treating pain? Well, what we did is we used pain, we used neurobiology as a drug delivery device. It turns out that pain nerves have a unique set of receptors that open to form a channel whenever pain is present. These channels allow charged molecules in. So by using a charged form of lidocaine, we can deliver the nerve blocking agent only to active pain nerves without causing numbness or paralysis because the nearby nerves are not affected. Now this is great. It's tremendous to have a, a better treatment for pain. But there is one more thing I want to tell you about. There are a lot of similarities between pain and itch. For one, the same receptor channels that are present on pain nerves are also on itch sensing nerves. But the similarities do not end there. Chronic itch is as debilitating as chronic pain. And for most people with chronic itch, nothing helps. Steroid drugs can be used for some people with uh, chronic itch, but it does not work for most. Doctors typically have to treat six patients with chronic itch using these steroid drugs before finding one who reports a 50% reduction in their itch symptoms. But charged local anesthetics work great for blocking itch. And importantly, they block the types of itch that are currently impossible to treat. So we're excited, and these are a few of the applications that we think charged local anesthetics may be good for. We're currently developing this technology and optimizing it with hopes of beginning clinical trials within the next two years. It's my hope that by using science to advance medicine, we can relieve some of the pain and itch that's suffered daily by billions of people worldwide. And who knows, maybe this breakthrough will one day help you or someone you love. Thank you.